Hello and welcome to Cupcake Addiction's Giant Cupcake Piñata Tutorial where I'll be showing you how to make a giant hollow chocolate cupcake filled with lollies and sweets. Perfect for any party and great to make in advance. Tools and equipment that you will need today. I have a silicone giant cupcake case. Now silicone means that it bends. Silicone is what you need. You cannot use a metal cupcake tin and if you're looking for these, they sell them a lot on eBay. Sometimes they're called big top, otherwise they're called giant cupcake cases or giant cupcake pans. So if you can't find them in your local store, have a look online. You shouldn't really pay more than about $10 for them. I've got just a teaspoon, I've got a spatula, a Ziploc bag, a pair of scissors. I've got some melted dark chocolate. Now I've melted 500 grams or about 18 ounces of dark chocolate and I've added in about 50 grams or two ounces of Kofa, Crisco or shortening just to thin that dark chocolate out and make it spread a little bit easier so it's not quite so thick and chunky. I've got some peanut M&Ms. You could also use crispy M&Ms if you're not a fan of peanuts. I've got some mini M&Ms and for the cherry on top I'm just using a giant choc orange ball but if you can't find these where you are you could also use a red gum ball. Let's get started. Pop a few things to the side such as the lollies. Now to get the amount of lollies that I needed I've basically just picked some different candies that I think my family will like and I've filled the giant cupcake case. That's about a good measure for how many you're going to need to fill your giant cupcake. We'll pop those off to the side. Now we're going to firstly fill the mould. So if you followed us through our giant cupcake chocolate patty pan tutorial, you will have done this before. But I'm just going to spoon in about a quarter of that chocolate into the mould. And then I'm going to take the spatula. You can just give it a little bit of a shake around. You can see there I'm shaking it. Just to start it moving into the creases and moving up the side of the patty pan or up the side of the the top of the patty pan and then just use your spatula and just spread it to the top. This is going to be our first layer and for this giant cupcake piñata I'm going to do two layers like this on each half. Now when you are bringing it to the top scrape off the spatula and just make sure that you're getting a nice thick edge because we're going to need those edges to be quite thick so that we can glue them together with some more melted chocolate at the end. Same again for the base of the giant patty pan. You need a little bit more chocolate in the base than what you've used in the top. And once again, I'm just going to turn it. And while I'm turning it, I'm giving it a good shake. All right, back to the spatula. And I'm just going to spread that up the sides. Don't worry if there's some little thin spots. That's why we're going to give it two coats. And if, like me, you think you might need just a little bit more chocolate in there, just dollop a little bit more in. This bit can get a little bit messy, so be prepared to mess up your kitchen. Alright, now in between the two coats, I'm going to allow those to set. So once again, you'll see I'm just scraping that up to the edges to make sure I'm getting a nice thick edge. I'm going to give those probably about 15 minutes in the fridge. So I'll put both of these halves in the fridge for 15 minutes. I wouldn't recommend freezing because freezing actually makes them a little bit too hard, a little bit too fast and they can crack. So I recommend just a nice slow cool in the fridge. You should have something that looks like this. Now once they've been in the fridge for 15 minutes, I'm going to take them out. I'm going to repeat that process so that they both have a double coat of that dark chocolate. Then I'm going to pop them back in the fridge for a further 15 minutes. Because we don't have a lot of time today for all of that cooling, here's two that I have pre-refrigerated. Now both of these have been double coated and are ready to go. So to remove them from the silicone moulds, what you want to do is you just want to peel away the edges and just roll them down evenly pop this one out of the way, roll them down evenly around the edges. Now they should just pop out, you might hear them kind of dragging away from the edges there. All right, you should have the top of your giant cupcake, your giant chocolate cupcake, and the same again for the bottom. Just going to roll down the edges and evenly. 
Now when you get to the bottom of the giant, bottom half I suppose, just try not to put your fingers on the outside of the chocolate patty pan too much because you don't want to leave finger marks on it. And out it comes. Alright, at this point we can add in our chocolates and candies. Don't just tip them all in. I recommend placing them in because you don't want to, I suppose, distribute the weight unevenly in that giant cupcake. So just nice and gently. It's going to hold a bit of weight because we've given it that double coat. And because it's a piñata and we want that lovely spilling effect when it does get opened, I'm going to add in some mini M&Ms. Just as a bit of a gap filler. And then some of the larger M&Ms. Provided you haven't eaten them all as you're making your giant cupcake piñata. Now it is important to make sure that you've got none of the candy coming out over the edges of your giant chocolate case. And here's where our Ziploc bag comes in. So we're going to open up the Ziploc bag and take that now very messy bowl of melted chocolate just scoop a little bit into the Ziploc bag. All right. Make sure you do up the Ziploc bag. The amount of times I've had chocolate spurt out the top because I haven't done it all the way up. And with our scissors, just cut off a little corner. Doesn't matter particularly what size it is. I just like something that gives me a little bit of control and it's just it's really just to make a nice neat edge. Now I'm going to as you can see here just pipe a bit of a snake or a bit of a a generous edge along that thick edge that we left of the melted chocolate. You want to work quite quickly because your bottom of your patty pan will be cold from the fridge and you don't want that chocolate to start setting until we've attached the the top half of it. So right to the edges as far as you can, taking any parts that the top is going to be able to stick to. Now gently pick up your top and sit it on top. And you'll see there you've got a little bit of the chocolate coming out the sides. That's absolutely perfect. That means that we've got a nice even fit. So just centre it on the top of your cupcake base and then just give the edge a little wipe off. And that's just going to neaten things up. But you want a little bit of chocolate coming out the sides because that means that you've actually stuck. Alright, I just had to wash my hands because as I mentioned this is quite messy work. Now I've got just an iced cake board, a wooden iced cake board. Uh, we do have a tutorial on how to ice your cake board if you'd like to get it iced. You don't have to have a cake board, you can just present this on a plate. But for me I like to be able to pick it up and carry it around without putting any marks on that lovely chocolate patty pan. So to attach it to my cake board, I'm going to take just a spoon of that melted chocolate and I'm just going to place it in the center. That's going to be the glue that attaches my giant cupcake piñata to the cake board. I should also mention I've popped that cake board just on a little, um, a little cake decorating turntable. You could also use a Lazy Susan or something like that. We're just going to give that just a couple of minutes to dry before we go any further so that that giant cupcake doesn't slide around. Okay, so it's time to decorate our cupcake piñata. I've just got that Ziploc bag again with the melted chocolate in it and I'm just going to place little blobs of dark chocolate on this top case. They're just going to act like little sprinkles or hundreds and thousands I guess and I like the look of different sized M&Ms. So you can see there, while well, I've got it on the turntable, it's just a bit of a random placing. Obviously you can choose any different colours that you like for this, if you're theming it for a girls party or a boys party or whatever you like, a Christmas party, you could do all red and green M&Ms. But it's a really, really neat and easy way to bring a cake to a party that you don't have to make right before make this about a week in advance. Don't store it in the fridge, just store it at room temperature in an airtight container if you can. If you love our tutorials make sure that you subscribe to our channel. 
We upload several times a week now and we are always coming up with great cupcake, cake pop, giant cupcake and cake decorating ideas as well as basics, recipes and other hints and tips to help you along your cake decorating journey. Just placing those last few, as I said you can have as many or as few as you like here. And give it a little turn, make sure that you've got any gaps. Alright, for the big finale, I'm just going to nice little blob of that melted chocolate. This is where my giant Jaffa or your large gumball comes in. And I'm just going to place that on top. You may need to support that with fingers just for a couple of minutes until it fully sets. That one seems to be holding quite nicely. But there you have your giant chocolate cupcake piñata, ready for any party, ready for any occasion, and ready to smash and watch your delicious candy come falling out of. Thanks very much for watching.